Yara with it, Harry! That whole storytelling scene was so immersive and so well done. That was probably my favorite part in the whole movie. <gasps> I totally disagree. Hey guys, today we're ranking Harry Potter films. <laughs> I love Harry Potter. I've been a fan since like I was a child. I've read all the books. I've seen all the movies. I love it. It's it's very comforting to me. The Harry Potter films reflected where I was at in my stage as a teenager. Whenever the movies would come out, we would be at the same age as Harry Potter and his, you know, duo of best friends. So it was really incredible. Oh, it's brilliant. I wish they would do like a Sims Harry Potter world. Like why, why does that not exist yet? Why can we not live in a Harry Potter universe online? I honestly don't think there's been anything like Harry Potter that has like caught the attention of the world. Like I don't think Hunger Games fans don't come for me, but I just think Harry Potter was just that thing. Yeah, no, definitely. There's nothing that has come close and I don't think anything could really. The ranking star for this is going to be God tier, OK tier, and Mac tier. So let's get started. So we're going to kick things off with the OG Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Without it, you don't have the Harry Potter franchise. He finds out he's a wizard. You're a wizard, Harry! Then he's at Hogwarts. Like, everything's happening. I think this is already God tier for me. Like, it's it's number one. I, I have to agree. I feel like there's such a magical moment. Even now, whenever you watch the first film, you're kind of taken back to that beginning because you've got all this anticipation yes. after reading the book. Seeing it on the big screen was just absolutely phenomenal. So it's God tier for me as well. I just think this one needs to be a God tier. I totally agree. Honestly, like OG, this is the one that I will go back to again and again. Okay, so second film, Chamber of Secrets. I have to say, this is hands down my favorite, my favorite one in the whole world. Like, I just think they nailed it. Book to screen, it was impeccable. Professor Lockhart, like just as a character, Gilderoy Lockhart. What, what was the award he won? Like, which weekly's most charming uh, uh, smiles? Yes, like? like repetitive, just the <laughs> every time. The cast was still young, like they weren't teenagers yet, they weren't super annoying, and like the mystery of it, the big fucking snake, like it just, it all worked for me, like hands down, this, this for me is above the first one, it's like godly god tier. I don't think I would rate a god, I don't think it's as good as the first one, so for that reason I'm gonna give it an okay tier. I'm disappointed now, I've got to say, but you know, I respect your decision. You know what is good about the Chamber of Secrets though? You get to go to the burrow and you get to yes. like see all the Weasleys in like exactly. their original environment. Like, it's I think great, that's the Whomping Willow, like it's all happening. I think you need to lift it. I mean, True. let's just see, we'll wait, we'll wait to the end of the, of the series. And I guess you're introduced to like the first Horcrux, like in the form of the diary, you know? Yes, it like sets the whole scene. Young Tom Riddle, like he's sexy. I really love the last 30 minutes because we get Tom Riddle. Beautiful. Can I sit it in the middle? Like I don't think it's God, but I don't think it's okay. It's like on the border. Okay, it's a border film, that's fine, I'll it's take a border that. Film. It's not like up there with like the best ones, so it'd have to be okay yeah. for me. Yeah, I agree, it's, it's in the middle. Yeah. So okay to you for me too. Okay, film number three, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. There are a lot of opinions around this, a lot of people say that this is the best book and the best film. This was, I think, the best translated book to movie. The only good thing about it is Sirius Black. Yes, Gary Oldman, God heavens, oh. like you saved that film. I mean, I know he should have been younger, so everybody that's like, he should have only been in like his 20s or 30s, I hear you, but Gary Oldman can do anything. Also, it had Hermione punching Draco, right? Oh, yes. I was so crushed by how bad this film was. So for me personally, I have to put it in meh, because mm, just, they just, they really did it dirty. Yeah, I think I'm with you. I think it's a bit of a meh film. God tier, a hundred percent on this one. I will have to say though that the werewolf design was poorly executed. I want like Van Helsing werewolves. That's the only negative. But besides that, ten out of ten. So now we've got the fourth movie, The Goblet of Fire, another iconic book. But was it translated well enough into the movie? What do you think, Isha? Oh, as much as I hate to say it, like I love this movie when I was a kid because it was so magical. I love seeing the other schools. I love the whole like. Try was a tournament, but it, it just wasn't the best movie. 
Like I loved the book and I was slightly disappointed. This is a very, very pivotal moment in the books and the films, okay? There's a lot that happens. Cedric Diggory comes in, love you Robert Pattinson. It just got so much wrong. Like the Triwizard Cup, like creepy fucking Rafe fiends. Is that how you say Voldemort's name? Like when he comes out of that yeah. cauldron and he's all like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's just, it's so, he's such an over actor. Like Voldemort was not scary. It had a lot of Cho Chang crying a lot. And just being like, Harry, Harry. And just crying and weeping in the background. So. <laughs> Which was not her fault. I mean, like the character was kind of poorly written, but yeah, this movie, I'm gonna say it's okay to you. Yeah, it's okay for me too, I think this one. Yeah, sorry, Goblet of Fire fans. I'll put it in okay, because like, I laugh at various points in the film unintentionally, but it wasn't, it wasn't God for me, it was just okay. Look, I completely disagree. I love this <gasps> film, I really love this one. And I think that, you know, a lot of people would disagree with me, but the Triwizard Tournament is one of the best events in the whole series. It is still one of my favorite films, so I'm gonna give it a god to you. Wow, okay. Next one is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I hate this film. I do not know a single person who's like, you know which Harry Potter film I want to rewatch tonight? Order of Phoenix. Yeah. It's like, fuck, nobody wants to watch this. It's terrible. Okay, I just have to share a memory, and that is when my family and I went to go see this in the movies, my, my dad fell asleep. Like, you would watch this film and, like, not have learned that much about the whole no. universe. you just no. be like, what happened? Like, very sad, obviously, when Sirius dies. That is, yeah. like, heartbreaking moment. Daniel Radcliffe did that beautifully. The scream, the torment, it's all happening. But the rest of the film belongs in the bin. I reckon this is a uh, metier, if I have to. Yeah, one's gotta go there. Yeah, I mean, considering the fact that I literally skip over it, I'm gonna have to give this one a metier as well. Bow bow. This one's a very strong meh. Yeah. Okay, so next up, Half-Blood Prince. Harry's back on a quest. This was really good as well. Like it had the whole backstory with Draco and Snape. Dumbledore, like you kind of get to know him a bit more and like you see Harry kind of come into his own as a wizard. It was fun, like there was humor. Oh no, wait, but Dumbledore dies. I feel like it didn't really impact me in the movie when I first watched it and it still doesn't really impact me when I watch it. Like obviously Dumbledore dying is like such a huge moment, an iconic moment in these films. But an emotional like, moment. I know. Tears. I, just, I feel like the way that he died was maybe too dramatic for me to feel it. I've got to put it in God, just because the memes, you know, it's such, it's such a fun ride. Although obviously very sad with Dumbledore dying, but the rest, what a laugh. So I think for me, great movie, but okay tier. Would I put it in God? Maybe not. I think this is more an okay for me. We're gonna put that one in okay tier for me as well. Film number seven, Deathly Hallows part one. This was one of the final movies. There was a lot of action, but I felt like part one was kind of setting up for part two. So it wasn't as good for me. Obviously not as good as part two. Like, <gasps> I totally disagree. For me, the most iconic part of this movie is when they learn about the Deathly Hallows. So that whole storytelling scene was so immersive and so well done. That was probably my favorite part in the whole movie. And then he betrays them, stabs them in the back. But it's not his fault. They've got Luna. That was really sad. Just wanted to be dramatic. <laughs> it felt to me like a very like character development film, which is probably yeah. nice. But at the end of the day, it's Harry Potter. You're here for the action. You're here for the magic. Do not care for the angst with Ron being like, no, oh, you hate me, and then coming back, could yeah. do without. But love that film. Like the first half, I think is really strong. Is there like a category we can do between God and okay? Because I feel like it fits into that, that little category. It's not perfect, but it's not okay. <laughs> it's It's gotta be like on the border of God and okay. Because it's not phenomenal, but you know, I enjoyed it. I would agree with you, like it's probably better than okay, but it's not God. Like it's it's a borderline. Out of the two, this would have to go into okay for me. That brings us to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows part two. I just remember watching this in the cinema and just crying. Like it was just such, it was the end of my childhood, you know? Like it was such a pivotal moment. 
but I hate the way they diverted from the book, you know, which was so like simple in that BAM! Voldemort thinks he's killed Harry. They take his body back. Oh, he's alive and BAM! He kills Voldemort. And it all came to like that final battle between Voldemort and Harry. Let's finish this the way we started. Together! They turned it into this fucking CGI fest of, you know, Voldemort and Harry flying through the sky and they're all like interwoven. It just reached back into so many plot lines that you would have forgotten throughout the films and just wrapped it all up so beautifully in a little like, parcel. Even the kiss with Ron and Hermione felt like to me it was like it was wrong. That wasn't how it was meant to go. It's also, I have to say, my least rewatch one only because I cry. Like Lupin, Tonks, like all everyone, all the faves just being killed. I can't handle it. It's so, <laughs> especially it. when he shows up when Harry's on his way to meet Voldemort in the Forbidden Forest and he tells him like it's fine that he's dead and I'm just like, I can't. I can't even talk about it, moment. I'm already getting emotional. <laughs> I know, I'm like, need a moment here. God tier, no more, no more talk needed. Yeah. This might be controversial, but it's a meh. I, I don't rewatch it, I don't like it. I pretend it doesn't exist. I think for me, it's another border film. It's like, better than okay, but it's not God. So Hamida, ready to find out who wins? I am so ready. Oh yeah, yeah, that's expected. Like, yeah. as we said, that's the first one. It's where it all started and it has the most like memories for me. So I I'm happy at one. So good. Of course. Oh, of course. Well deserved. I mean, it's brilliant. It's also the shortest book, so they couldn't really fuck it up. It's mm -hmm. just, I mean, very hats off because it's just, it started the series. It's the love yes. for everyone. And it's the one that you can just, anyone can pick up and watch. Let us know what you want us to rank next. Just comment it down below and we might do it in a video. 